Hello and thank you for watching today's tutorial video. In today's video, we're going to show you how to install the lifting bracket for a tri-lift, which is a vehicle lift application. We're going to be installing the bracket for that vehicle lift onto a Afikim Model S4. To get started, you will want to unscrew the four hand screws that are located on the shroud when you take off the seat. You will need to remove the seat first. It does just come right up and then take those four screws off and you'll see that the body panel comes straight off. From there, you wanna go ahead and disconnect the batteries. There are gonna be two bolts on each battery. Just go ahead and remove those terminal connection bolts and remove the batteries. There's really nothing to it. We're just using a drill, but you could use a wrench or a pair of pliers to loosen up those bolts and remove them. You are gonna need a few tools here. Uh, drill is very recommended. You will need either a pair of channel grips, a pair of pliers, some wrenches, what have you to get the job done. Here we're just removing each battery one at a time. There are some straps that hold the batteries in place. You'll want to make sure to remove those and restrap the batteries when you go to put them back on. If you need to change the batteries, this is really all you need to do as well and reconnect your batteries. Once the batteries are removed, you'll want to go ahead and remove the pads that the batteries rest on to expose two hidden screws. You also want to completely remove the straps and then remove the floorboard padding on the main floorboard area to expose an additional set of eight screws. We're only going to need to unscrew a total of eight, including the two that are under the battery pad. So pay close attention here. We're going to remove the first one there in the front, the second in the middle, and then the front side or the left side of the scooter, rather the front and the middle screws are coming out. You'll also need to remove the screws that are under the batteries that we just showed you. And then we'll go ahead and start to remove the screws that are actually underneath the scooter. You are gonna to need to tilt the scooter over. So between the six that we're removing now underneath the battery pads and the floor pads, those are the first six that you'll need to remove from the top. And then when you tip the scooter over, it will help to have a second set of hands to tilt the scooter over. It is very heavy. And it's also very helpful to have a 90 degree drill bit that you can use to get into tight places like this one. You're gonna need to remove two screws that are pointing forward and they're behind the front wheels. That's one of them. And here's another one that we're pointing out. To get those, like I said, you will need either a very short stubby screwdriver and manually it's very difficult to do this. We did not have the 90 degree angle drill bit that we wish we had uh, that would have made the job a lot easier. So if you do have a 90 degree drill bit that you can use to get that screw out, it's highly recommended. Once all eight of the screws are out, the floorboard panel can completely be removed. And that is what you're going to need to do in order to install this heavy duty bracket that attaches to the scooter and is used to lift the scooter with the tri-lift application. So we're just kind of visualizing where it's gonna go and showing you how it's gonna be mounted. There are going to be some brackets that come with your tri-lift bracket and the tri-lift application when you order it. The hardware is going to be used to secure the bracket to the seat frame bolts, which we're showing you now. There's a little bracket there that goes right up into the seat post. You're gonna need a 14 millimeter, a 12 millimeter uh, socket, and a couple of others, uh, 16 millimeter, you may need a whole drill bit set to get this entire process done. So make sure you have a drill bit set handy. What we're doing now is removing the two bolts that are used to hold the seat post in place, the rear bolts. You don't need to remove the front bolts, just the rear bolts for the seat post assembly. Once you have those two bolts out, you'll need to line up the tri-lift bracket so that the holes on the bracket which are meant to go deep up in there where we're working now, where the seat post bolts have been removed, are lined up, and then you just reinstall those bolts with the tri-lift bracket lined up so that those two holes, like we're showing you now, are gonna be lined up with those two holes for the rear side of the seat post, and that's what's gonna be used as an anchor point for this application. Those heavy-duty bolts that secure the seat post to the frame are now gonna be going through the back side of that tri-lift bracket, like you see here, just install one of the bolts first and get that nut on there finger tight. 
you actually need about three sets of hands to get this job done right. You could probably do it with two sets of hands, but we actually had one person holding the bracket, one person on the backside pushing the bolt through, and then me, the cameraman, helped out with the nuts and securing them to make them finger tight. In the initial stages of the installation, we're just getting all the bolts fed through the holes. And now you could see that piece of hardware, which is kind of like a U-shaped bracket. We pushed it on through in that position where it belongs. Pay close attention to the orientation of the bracket. You will need to get this to be matched up exactly how it's shown in the video and in the diagram that comes with your tri-lift. You will get a set of instructions with a diagram, but this video is very helpful. Again, we're just putting all the hardware together just keeping it finger tight for now. Once you have everything finger tight, it should hold the bracket in place, and then you can go ahead and come back and start tightening everything down. Uh, we do need to install the U-bolt, which comes in the hardware package with your tri-lift bracket. That U-bolt's gonna go right here where we're pointing out just below the triangle bracket that goes on the left side of the scooter. It's important that you do keep this triangle bracket on the left side of the scooter. We have the scooter tilted over on its right side, so it's showing up at the top here, as you can see. And we fished that U-bolt through the back side of the triangle. And now we're just gonna go ahead and put the bolts on finger tight, as we've mentioned. We've been doing everything like that for now, and we're now able to go back and show you that everything has been kind of put on there finger tight initially, and we're gonna start tightening everything up with our tools. So we're gonna go ahead and fast forward some of these parts here, but again, all we're doing is just tightening everything up so that it's nice and secure. You do wanna make sure that everything is tight so that nothing is shaky or wobbly when you're going to lift and lower your heavy duty AFIC MS4 on and off the lift. This scooter weighs over 300 pounds with the batteries, so you need to make sure that everything is installed correctly, securely, and that everything is tightened down very well. Uh, otherwise, you might run into issues. So here we're just using a pair of pliers and the drill, and we're setting it at a very high torque setting so that it can get everything secured there really nice and securely. At this point, the bracket is fully installed. We just need to now reinstall the batteries, the floorboard, the floor mats, the seat, and everything. But we're almost there, and we're making great progress. This whole process took about an hour. It can take more if you're not experienced. Uh, but, you know, that's just, but we made this video to help out both technicians and consumers that want to install the bracket on their own. The tri-lift application is very easy to work with compared to some of the other lifts. Uh, you don't really need to take it to a shop if you're handy and you have the tools to do everything that you're seeing in this video. So we've reinstalled the batteries now. We just had to reconnect the bolts for the terminals and make sure that they're wired up correctly. So pay close attention to the wiring configuration when you take it apart. Uh, we're reinstalling the shroud cover for the batteries now, and we're just going to go ahead and continue to install the finger tight screws there, those little hand screws, as well as the little caps in the back that we had to take off when the battery box cover separates from the rear body panel, those little circular pieces. When you go to take off that body panel, you'll notice that there's two little circular caps in addition to the four screws that come out. Just make sure you put those back in and make sure that the battery shroud cover is in there correctly and that the four screws are nice and tight. There is a little rubber grommet that goes around the seat post. Make sure that that's installed correctly too. That's just to keep debris out of there and to protect the body panel. We're almost done at this point. It took about an hour or so all together to get the bracket installed. Um, this video should be very helpful if you follow along. You'll notice that bracket there on the left side of the scooter. It's pretty low profile. It doesn't stick out that far compared to the armrests of the seat. So it doesn't really add a whole lot of width to the scooter overall, which is pretty convenient. Now we're just installing the seat. The seat just has a male seat post connection that goes into the female connection point there in the middle of the body panel that goes over the batteries. And we're pretty much done at this point. So as you can see, that triangle piece that we're zooming in on now is kind of like a hook. Uh, it does have a set of 
rails that go underneath and that's what's lifting the entire scooter. Now I'm lowering the tri-lift which is connected onto a F-150 temporarily. We just ran the wire underneath the truck to the battery to show you. Once you have that red piece lowered all the way to the ground, that's the docking hook that lifts right up into that black triangle that acts as a kind of a lifting bracket. So the red piece is going to lift up and get hooked into the black triangle piece and that's going to essentially turn this into kind of like a forklift style lift application where the fork part is detachable and, a, and it's a secured to the scooter. So when you drive the scooter up to the tri-lift, when it's lowered to the ground, you can start lifting up the tri-lift arm, which you can do with the remote control wirelessly or with the toggle switch on the motor head. And eventually once it's lifting, it's going to hook on and get it into position to where it needs to be so that it can lock into place. As it raises itself up, you'll notice that that black triangle is kind of reaching a certain point where it straightens out the scooter and locks it into place and it's not going anywhere. This is a 300 pound plus mobility scooter which is being lifted automatically. There is a drop adapter that we've installed for demonstration purposes in this particular truck and this setup. You don't need the drop adapter but we were just showing you how to install it and we left it on. So you wouldn't actually need a drop adapter in most cases, it would rest higher up on the ground. Here with the drop adapter, it shows like it's a little bit low to the ground, but again, this isn't what it would look like if you didn't need the drop adapter. The scooter would actually sit up higher, so you wouldn't have to worry about it hitting anything that you know you go over like a speed bump. But if you can imagine, with the scooter up about another four inches, it's going to be very high up and completely out of the way of any speed bumps or anything like that. Again, we're just showing you one more time with a different angle how the lift hooks onto that bracket that we installed onto the Africam S4. The Africam S4 is one of our favorite mobility scooters. It's super powerful. It's so powerful it can even pull this truck. We towed it just to have some fun after we did this video. We put the truck in neutral and towed the truck with the Africam S4. If you want to learn more about the Africam S4 or this lift application, visit our website, mobilitydirect.com. We do offer our products tax-free, shipping is free, and we make a ton of videos like this, including entertainment videos, not just educational videos and promotional videos. Be sure to like this video, share it if you wouldn't mind. We'd really appreciate the support. And if you wanna get notified when new videos come out like this, just visit our YouTube channel and subscribe to enable notifications. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Sergio with Mobility Direct. Have a great day.